70-741 Lesson 13 Determining Scenarios and Requirements for Implementing SDN SDN is Software Defined Networking So let's start off with defining that. What is Software Defined Networking? Well, Software Defined Networking allows you to centrally configure and manage physical and virtual network devices including routers, switches, and gateways in your data center. So within this lesson, you'll be looking at the various deployment scenarios and network requirements that you need to have for deploying SDN. Requirements, scenarios for implementing Hyper-V network virtualization, that's HNV, and using network virtualization generic route encapsulation. Say that five times real fast. Or virtual extensible LAN. These are all new concepts. These are very high level concepts that we need to be aware of. We'll be determining scenarios for implementing of software load balancing, SLB, and within the concepts of north, south, and east, west load balancing. So let's take a look. What, do, what are they talking about there? Well, within a data center, what we talk about as being north, south traffic is the traffic between your servers and your clients. East-West deals with the traffic that's going between your servers. So working on all those different types of load balancing. You'll be looking at the various implementation scenarios for Windows Server Gateways. What is a Windows Server Gateway, you say? If we set up a router, RRAS, on our Windows Server to perform routing functions for our network. Understand that that implementation is meant for small networks. You wouldn't use a software router, which is what you're doing in Windows Server, on a very large network. However, in a virtualized environment or on a data center environment, you may implement a what's called a Windows Server Gateway. Now, Windows Server Gateway it's a virtual machine based software router and gateway that allows cloud service providers at CSPs and enterprise organizations to enable data center and cloud network traffic routing between virtual and physical networks including the internet. Let's take a quick look at that. So here's a visualization of that. Whereas if you set up a router a NAT router for your small network, it has one gateway. Well, the concept of a multi-tenant gateway, a Windows Server gateway, is it allows you to create connections between multiple physical sites and your virtualized networks. So multiple connections. So multi-tenant, what is multi-tenant? Well, understand that multi-tenancy or multi-tenant is an architecture in which a single instance of a software application serves multiple customers. Each customer is called a tenant, just like in an apartment building. Tenants may be given the ability to customize some parts of the application, such as the color of the user interface or business rules, but they can't customize the actual code of the application. So they can customize it a little bit to fit their model, but not the underlying code. That's multi-tenancy. We'll also be looking at what are some of the requirements and scenarios for distributed firewall policies and network security groups. So let's begin with Virtual Machine Manager. What is VMM? VMM is a component of Configuration Manager. Understand that VMM, it consists of a number of different components. It gives you a fast and simple consolidation of the virtual infrastructure. You can create virtual machines from it. You can migrate what's called V2V, virtual to virtual migration. You can do workplace placement. You can move subnet to subnet without interruption decreases physical server utilization. In VMM, a cloud is an on-premise logical grouping of resources. It could be storage, networks, hosts, load balancers, and libraries. So it consists of a number of different components. The VMM management server 
it's the computer that runs the VMM service. It processes commands, transfers files, communicates with the VMM database, the library server, and the virtualization hosts. Now this could connect to Microsoft Hyper-V, VMware ESX, ESXi, and Citrix Zen server. Because it's considered the hub of your VMM architecture, it should be the first VMM server installed. Now we also have what's called the Virtual Machine Manager Administrator Console. And just as it sounds, it allows you to centrally view and manage the VMM management server and related components, including the physical and virtual resources. The VMM library well, it's a catalog of resources. You know, it might it can be the virtual hard disks, ISOs, templates, answer files, PowerShell scripts. Yes, PowerShell. You can use PowerShell to manage your VMM. And that's what our next bullet point talks about is all the fact that you can run commands to do everything you can within the console. Let's take a quick look at some of the myriad of PowerShell commandlets. So here on Microsoft's website is all those PowerShell commandlets that can be used in conjunction with Virtual Machine Manager. And you can see there are a lot of them. Add, con clear, convert, enable, find, get, these are all individual commandlets that we can utilize instead of having to use the console. Now, installing Configuration Manager and incorporating VMM is a fairly complex task. So we don't do that in the context of this lesson. We don't do it in the context of the 70-7041 coursework. So let's continue on. Software-defined networking, what is it? Well, software-defined networking, as I previously stated, it's a way to centrally configure and manage both physical and virtual network devices. These can be virtualized or physical routers, switches, and gateways in your data center. So you know that when we work with our virtual infrastructure, we the first thing we do, well, after you've decided where you're going to store your virtual infrastructure, we create network switches. We, we create our virtual switches. Well, within that we can create our Hyper-V network virtualization. We can do our Windows Server Gateway. You also need to use and manage physical switches and routers and integrate those virtual and physical devices together. And so, like almost everything else we talk about before we can deploy an SDN, it takes a lot of planning. You have to start by making sure you can access all your physical networking components and physical hosts. You have to make sure you have access to all your networking components, including the VLANs, your routers, your border gateway protocol devices. If you're using RDMA, you need to make sure that you use data center bridging if you're using the RDMA with converged Ethernet, you need to use data center bridging with priority based flow control. Many, many requirements on how you're going to do this. So what are the things that we components that we use? We may use System Center Operations Manager. System Center is not one product. It's multiple products. System Center Operations Manager, it provides the infrastructure monitoring for your data center and both the private and public clouds. As we talked about, the System Center Virtual Machine Manager, it gives you the tools to manage your virtual infrastructure. This can give you the ability to provision and manage virtual networks. And as we already discussed, the Windows Server Gateway that allows you to route data center and cloud traffic between your virtual and physical networks. It is a virtual software router and gateway. Implementing a network controller. It is a Windows Server 2016 server role. But let's hold on a second. We can't do that on our virtual environment right now because the Windows servers that we're working with are standard. They're not data center. 
the network controller role is only available in Windows Server Data Center Edition. Be aware of that. You may run into a circumstance at some point in your career where you're tasked with deploying a network controller and you can't find the role. Well, if you can't find it, take a look back. Take a step back. What edition of server are you running? If it's standard, sorry, you won't have that available to you. It contains two application programming interfaces. These are what we call APIs. The southbound API, it communicates with the network. The northbound API gives you the ability to communicate with the network controller. So for example, you can use that to manage your Hyper-V virtual machines and switches, data center firewall, multi-tenant gateways. There's many different things you can do with this. So if you've got large workloads, you can divide the workload just the same ways if you have a lot of work to be accomplished, you could divide that work between your team. Well, you do this by distributing the network traffic among virtual network resources. We utilize software load balancing, and this evenly distributes that tenant and tenant customer network traffic between your virtual network resources. Just like network load balancing, SLB enables multiple servers to host the same workload, and this gives you high availability and scalability. Just like we previously discussed, you have two different types of traffic. You have north-south traffic, east-west traffic. The north-south traffic is the traffic between your servers and the clients. The east-west traffic is the traffic between your servers. You can use that software load balancing for both types of traffic. We briefly discussed the Windows Server Gateway. Understand again. It is a virtual machine-based software router and gateway that allows cloud-based service providers and enterprise organizations to enable data center and cloud network traffic routing between both virtual and physical networks, including the internet. There's three different configurations you can use. Multi-tenant aware VPN gateway, multi-tenant aware NAT gateway, or as a forwarding gateway for internal physical network access. Please be aware that a data center firewall is slightly different. It allows you to configure and manage firewall access control rules for both the east-west and north-south network traffic in your data center. It's a stateful multi-tenant firewall when you utilize this, when you deploy it, you can install and configure firewall policies to help protect your virtual networks from unwanted traffic, from both internet and intranet networks, and between tenants. Remember, internet is the public. Intranet are internal private networks. So we said it's a stateful multi-tenant firewall. What's stateful? A stateful firewall looks at the state of current connections and it allows inbound connections based on the outbound response of connection. And like any other firewall, it works with ACLs, access control lists. Be familiar with how to create access control lists. This is the heart of your firewall. The distributed firewall manager is part of your network controller. We then use network security groups. What is a network security group? Well, a network security group allows you to define rules to segment your virtual environment into virtual subnets. This supports multi-tiered environments. A network security group contains access control list rules that either allow or deny traffic to or from a virtual subnet or virtual machine. So for your net lesson summary, understand what an SDN is and what it allows you to do. Understand what a network controller does and the two APIs that are contained within it, the southbound and northbound. Make sure you understand the concept of software load balancing 
and how it compares to network load balancing. The concept of the Windows Server Gateway and the Data Center Firewall and how it can manage rules. The concept of multi-tenancy as well as the various other terms contained within this lesson. Thank you for viewing Lesson 13 in 70-741.